Hello my viewers. This video is for you barred wall hung packaged air conditioning enthusiasts out there. I had to replace a condensing fan motor today on one and I thought I'd share it with you. So here we go. Okay what I have here is an old barred air conditioning system. It's a wall hung package. It has a problem. Right now the bearings are going out on the condensing fan motor and there it is. Okay, so what I have to do here is I gotta pull the condensing fan motor out of there. Now the way I do it is I actually pull out this entire shroud and everything. That's this whole thing right here, this metal. It holds the fan motor in place and I'm gonna just take the whole thing out by removing all the screws that hold it in place, like right here. I'm going to do that now off camera. Okay, now I have the shroud loose. Okay, I took all the screws out, and it's ready to be pulled out. Now, a little trick of the trade, what you really have to do here is you have to cut with some tin snips this bottom part of this uh, uh, cabinet in order to be able to pull out the shroud. Otherwise, there's no way for the shroud to really come out. And then you just kind of fold it over for temporarily. The wires on the motor have to be cut. Naturally, make sure that the power is disconnected before you go cutting any wires. And right now, just cut it, cut the wires right here at the motor. Now I can pull this shroud out. That's not to say it's going to be real easy because there's always stuff in the way or whatever. You just have to make sure to get everything out of the way. Yeah, it'll pull out if you're, you know, tussling with it a little bit. It'll slide right out. There's the shroud with the fan right here. And, of course, there's the, the dead condensing fan motor. Okay, now for the next step. We're going to remove this fan blade from the shaft of this motor. And the best way to do that is first use some sandpaper on here okay, to uh, remove any kind of rust and things like that so that the fan blade will be easier to slide off of the motor shaft. Now as you can see I've sanded away a lot of the rust from the shaft. Now we can loosen the the screws that hold the hub on the shaft. Okay. Then the idea just to remove the screws all together really. Just make sure you don't lose them. Alright now that I've removed the screws that hold the hub on the shaft. It's time to give it a little what uh, Mechanic Warrior likes to call weasel piss. Uh, in this case it's PB Blaster. I've lost the nozzle off of mine so I've got to... Uh oh, I'm out. Great. I like up with a little bit of um, oil as well. Get some in everywhere I can. This is a uh, see uh, a zoom oil that this is actually a great motor lubricator. It, if you can catch the motor before it goes bad altogether. Now it's time to remove the fan blade. Best way I've found to do this is to put a wrench between the motor and the hub of the fan blade and hold it in position. And while I'm holding this wrench into place, I can turn the, uh, the blade. This isn't going to be easy, like never is. See how it's already starting to work loose? Kind of have to work it a little bit to loosen it up. Sometimes pretty stubborn. Naturally, whatever you do, never strike the tip of the shaft with a steel hammer or you'll like never get it off because it'll mushroom. Now I got it pretty much loose. I should be able to just pull it right off, and, which I did. Okay, 
Okay, now I'm to loosen this bolt here on this mount that holds the condensing fan motor in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a little zoom oil. You know, you can give it a PB blaster or whatever you have if you want. My, my PB blaster just ran out. So this is what I'm stuck with using right now. Sometimes you'll have to actually remove this bolt, but it's not necessary. Of course, don't forget to remove the screw that holds the ground wire in place. And now it's time to remove the motor from this band. This, it's called a belly band type of mount. Um, good idea to take a wrench or something and just pry uh, this mount apart a little bit so that the motor can slide off easier. Push it off my foot and there it is. Right here is the old motor. You can see three wires came out of this one. Okay. This one goes to the run capacitor, this brown one. This yellow one is usually hot all the time. And then the black one will go to the fan relay. Now on this new motor, it's slightly different. This motor is, for the most part, sort of like a rescue type motor. It actually is good for any of the horsepowers between one third and one sixth horse. Of course, the voltage is 208 to 30 and single phase. Now then, if you look at these two brown wires, they go directly to the run capacitor strict that is strictly for the condensing fan motor. And no other wires will go to that, that run capacitor. Now if you look at the wiring diagram though, this does tell you how you can set this up to be either a four wire hookup or a three wire hookup. On the three wire hookup, okay, the brown-white wire is just terminated. It is not to be used. And the brown wire is used to go to the run capacitor. And on the other side of the run capacitor, you'll put your purple wire, which is also connected to line one. Now this motor has two speeds. It has a high speed and a low speed. Now I'm gonna set this up for high speed, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the black wire and I'm going to terminate meaning not use this red wire I'm just going to cap it off oh and you're, if you're wondering what these wires are for this is for rotation what we'll do is we'll first set this up we'll, and see if we have to reverse the rotation after we get it running okay another important feature about this motor is that the line voltage actually matters. Right here it tells you what the run capacitor would be for each voltage. If your line voltage is 230 volts you would use a 5 microfarad at 370 volt type of run capacitor. If your line voltage is 208 which it is in this case then you would use a run capacitor that's rated for 7.5 at 370 volts. I'm not going to use these bolts that go through the motor. This is for another type of mount. I'm remember we are using a billy band type of mount, so these bolts could become a problem uh, with the fan blade later on. So I'm going to pop them off right now. Okay, and there you have it. See, I just cut them short. The bolts uh, down here. I'm not going to use them, so I'm going to cut them short as well. Now it's time to put this motor into place into the belly band mount. I'll have to do that with both hands off camera, sorry. Okay, now I mounted the motor on the belly band mount, and I even hooked up the ground wire. Now I just have to tighten this so that the motor will stay in place while it's moving. And there you have it, nice and tight. Now it's time to put this fan blade back on. 
the shaft and uh, here we go pretty, usually it'll go on pretty easy if it doesn't it means that you've got a problem with the hub probably especially if you're putting it on a new motor now that I have the fan blade in position too uh, it's this thing's ready to put back in place inside of the air conditioner that's the fun part by the way once you pulled the shroud out you'll be able to clean this condensing coil much easier and better this is the best opportunity that you as a tech will have to clean this coil alright now I've slid this shroud with the new motor back into position now I'll go ahead and put the screws back in where they belong now I have the run capacitor wires into place right on the run capacitor see I optioned to use the four wire setup so you see the only wires that are on this run capacitor is the brown and the brown white the black one which is the high speed I put up here in the defrost relay and I put the common wire which is this purple wire down here um, on uh, line one on the contactor and I terminated the low speed wire which is not going to be used in this case all I have to do is take some wire ties and make things all neat and tidy and there we have it I just trim up these wire ties there nice and neat all right I went ahead and put the screws back in that went uh, on this uh, shroud and I also tested to see if the rotation was right on it and it's not so I have to change the rotation using these wires right here and the way I do that is first I'm going to go ahead and plug these wires okay so like I'm doing here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the way that they were hooked up remember orange was on orange and yellow was on yellow now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the orange wires and I'm going to connect it with one of the yellow wires okay and there's only one way for this to work so there's no real way you can get it wrong and I'll take and I'll put this one on as well all right and now see now we switch the rotation of the motor by just changing these wires also what I'll do is I'll strap this in keep it out of uh, trouble all right and there it is all strapped in all right now I'm just going to tidy things up and I'll even cut these up here because I haven't done that yet okay looks all and uh, there we are and remember where I cut this metal right here and then I bent it back I went ahead and bent it back into position and I put a screw through it to hold it in in place so, uh, you know, that's, that's what you got to do to be able to get the shroud out of these old barred units. You got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. And there we are. She's running. All right. Make sure. Yeah. Air's coming out. Nice warm air. And I guess we can call it a day. We're done. Hi. Uh, one of my viewers out there has asked uh, if uh, my viewers uh, as in you all out there know what is on the other side of the coil uh, say like an evaporator coil um, I guess because a tech that he knew had um, tried to do some brazing on one side of the coil and burnt the filters on the other side and uh, anyway about started a fire he was just wondering if everybody out there knew 
what was on the other side of the coils. Thanks.